welcome back to Black Bear Forge and the tool of the day. Yesterday when we talked about hammers, we talked about diagonal peen hammers, which has a peen 45 degrees to the handle, so it works for drawing out without getting your knuckles close to the hot work. Today I thought we'd talk about the more conventional cross peen hammers and a little bit about straight peen hammers. Very simply put, a cross peen hammer has a peen that is perpendicular to the handle. So much like most of these hammers, and they are probably the most common hammer used in blacksmithing. A straight peen hammer is straight or in line with the handle. So if the eye hole runs the same direction as the peen does. And those are really pretty rarely seen. I don't know anybody that uses a straight peen hammer as their primary hammer. Most people have one or two of them in the shop but they don't get used very often. The cross peen hammer is much more common. The common cross peen hammer then is used in line with the material to help draw out stock faster. And this can be very efficient, although I don't know that it's very ergonomic. And quite frankly, I would more typically use the face and I'd go over the horn. On the other hand, it is extremely effective used or in line with the material, so your hand is perpendicular for spreading material. You can see how much spreading I've done on this piece of 5 8 bar just that little bit of time. And you can go quite a ways with the cross peen. Very effective. A straight peen then, and believe it or not, this is the only straight peen I have in the shop with a handle on it. It's the exact opposite. You'd use it in line with the stock for spreading, but you'd use it perpendicular to the stock for drawing out. A hammer this size is really meant for a striker. Cross peen hammers come in a variety of different general styles. The most common style of cross peen hammer is the German pattern. And that's what most of us think of when we think of a cross peen hammer. It has a nice centered balanced peen on it. Very simple. These come in all sorts of different shapes other than that, but they all have that same characteristic that the peen is pretty well centered in line with the hammer head. Lots of different manufacturers have a slightly different take on it. The next most common style is the Swedish style, often called a Swedish locksmith's hammer. These are nice hammers. Again, it's centered, but it has this more graceful appearance to it here. Try and turn it up here where you can see it better. So it's tapered here and here, and very nice hammers. A lot of people like these. You see them fairly often, but not as often as the German style. The final style, and I don't have one on a handle anywhere in the shop that I know of, is a French style hammer. And again, these are often referred to as a French locksmith's hammer. But the peen, while still fairly centered in use, comes all off of one side. I can't tell you exactly why, but that's just the style of hammer should be a perfectly usable hammer, but you don't see these very often. Now all of these hammers have one shared characteristic, and so did the diagonal peen hammer, the regular diagonal peen hammer, not the double-ended one, that we looked at yesterday, and that is they tend to have one flat face. Sometimes it's a little bit curved or a little bit domed, tighter radiuses, softer radiuses, that's all personal preference in how you dress your hammer. If you buy one new, they're usually pretty straight across and kind of sharp, and you'll probably need to dress them before you use them. But when we talk about hammer styles, we're generally not talking about the primary face that you do most of your forging with. All of these hammers, whether it's a cross peen, straight peen, diagonal peen, rounding hammer, ball peen hammer, tend to have one face that you do most of your forging with, and then it's the peen that sets it apart that makes it something different. 
and how you use that peen then determines which hammer you might want to use. Now if you've been watching my videos, you probably already know which cross peen hammer I use the most. Yesterday I showed you the little two pound diagonal peen hammer, which is my preferred smaller hammer, mostly just because of the weight. The diagonal peen just happens to be what that hammer has. But this hammer is the one that I use the most when I need a cross peen hammer. And that is this very nice, roughly three pound cross peen hammer made by Mr. William Bastis. I picked this up probably 15 years ago after he demonstrated at the Rocky Mountain Smiths Conference. And I don't believe these are still available. I don't think he still makes hammers for sale. So, sorry if I'm teasing you, but I don't think you can get one of these. You might have to make your own. Now, a, something important to note on any cross peen or straight peen or diagonal peen hammer is that the peens shouldn't be a sharp radius. They should be fairly flat across the top and they should have nicely relieved corners but they are not a sharp corner or sharp curve. It's a fairly flat surface and that is the best shape for a cross peen hammer. If you get too tight a radius it's hard to get those marks back out of your work and it doesn't necessarily make your work go any faster. This is my first ever forging hammer. I think it's only on its second handle. I've had it for the entire time I've been blacksmithing. It's an old Sears Craftsman. I think they're still available. I don't know if they're still of the same quality. But this hammer has been a real workhorse. It's a two and a half pound just generic cross peen hammer. Nothing special, fairly affordable. You can probably find these on the used tool market quite cheap and probably just have to put a new handle on them. Again, it has that fairly flat peen on it with nice radius edges up to the peen, but not a sharp curved peen. A lot of the cheaper hammers have a much sharper radius on them, and they just aren't really all that good for general blacksmithing. Well, that's about it for cross peen hammers and today's tool of the day. But I do have a question for you. As I continue with this series on trying to cover all of the tools in the shop eventually. Do you want me to do one category of tools clear through until we've talked about all of the hammers that I have in the shop or all the styles of hammers that I have in the shop? Or would you rather mix it up? Would you rather talk about hammers one day, then tongs, then maybe punches, and then set tools, and then maybe anvils, and then swedge blocks, and then back to hammers, and so on and so forth? Or would you rather talk about all the hammers so you can get just the hammer information down before you move on to another style of tool. Feel free to comment down in the comment section. I may go on with these and make a few ahead before I get all the opinions down there so you may not see a big change right off. We may still talk about hammers for a few more videos. Anyways, I hope you like that. Give it a thumbs up if you can. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't done that before. That way you'll know when more videos come out. But then get out to the shop, make something, challenge your abilities, but stay safe. Wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one.